हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम बैक टू दी सेशंस ऑन स्ट्रेटेजिक फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट फ्रेंड्स इन टुडेज क्लास वी हैव डिसाइडेड टू पिक अप द टॉपिक रिस्क मैनेजमेंट नाउ risk management is nothing new for you you had been talking about risk management all throughout the study of strategic financial management let me remind you when you started with the topic portfolio theory recall the very first lecture on portfolio you have learned that one of the typical objective of an investor would be to minimize the risk we have learned lots of risk management techniques relating to investments within that topic portfolio you have learned bonds we have talked about immunization of bonds even though we consider bond investment as kind of risk free investment but there are still some types of risks involved and we have learned the concept of immunization through which by creating a bond portfolio you can minimize the risk involved in bond investment as well you have dealt with forex chapter throughout forex chapter if you can recall you had been learning various risk management techniques correct entering into forward contract using currency futures using currency options using currency swaps you have then entered into derivative topic derivative topic is again filled up with risk management in fact one of the important function of derivative is to manage risk so friends throughout your strategic financial management studies by far we have been already talking about risk management so now friends when we talk about risk in the business business cannot be conducted without taking risk i am sure you would agree with me right any business small or big it involves risk taking so business cannot be conducted without taking risk this is a fundamental fact no one can change that no one can avoid risk in the business you cannot have a situation in business that okay i would want to do business without risk it won't happen there will be the element of risk now what choice do you have choice number 1 take risk without any planning unplanned risk take risk in a haphazard manner another choice could be a better choice could be make a systematic plan about what kind of risks you are going to face secondly how much would be the degree of risk how are you going to manage that risk make a systematic plan and accordingly you take risk in the business so friends what choice would you like unplanned risk or planned risk the obvious answer to that question would be taking a planned risk that is what we talk about as risk management so taking planned risk taking you know a risk which is you know calculated taking a risk which you can manage this is what we call as risk management so friends risk management begins with knowing which different types of risk exist in the business business risk can factually be classified into four categories of risk one is what we call as strategic risk second one compliance risk third one operational risk and fourth but the most important one is the financial risk so friends these four types of risks i would want you to note down i will show the same on screen please pay attention so as i have just mentioned the types of risk in business could be strategic risk number 2 compliance risk number 3 operational risk and number 4 financial risk friends please note down these four types of risks quickly
All right, friends, let us move ahead and deal with the first category of risk that we call as strategic risk. Let us try to understand what is strategic risk. Now, it is said that the exposure to loss resulting from a strategy that turns out to be defective or inappropriate. Friends, I would want you to write this line, a very, very important line, and then we move the discussion ahead. Let us first try to understand in details what is this strategic risk. Now you know management hierarchy, correct? Management levels, different levels. The top level management is what we call as strategic level. The lower level management is what we call as operational level. So the simple fundamental point is if there is a decision making error at the top level, at the strategic level, that will put the entity into the risk, the business into the risk. That kind of risk what a business has is termed as strategic risk. That means risk of something going wrong at the strategic level, some wrong strategy getting implemented. On the other side, if there is risk at the lower operational level, that means something going wrong in terms of your operational efficiency, your operational efficiency not kept up, your operational wastage is arising, that kind of risk could be operational risk. But we will talk about operational risk a little later. Let us first focus on strategic risk. Now friends, just imagine, suppose a new technology is being introduced, whether to adopt that new technology or not, could be a choice at the strategic level, right? Operational level manager cannot take such a decision. Now, a decision that goes wrong or goes unfavorable to the business entity at the strategic level creates strategic risk. That means we can simplify this whole point by uttering one line. We could say the strategic risk stands for risk of going wrong at the strategic decision making level. Let us take some examples to understand. One very popular example in the history of business is what we call as the Kodak example. Now friends, uh, everyone knows Kodak is into manufacturing of camera, correct? Now uh, you know these days we have digital cameras. In fact, uh, by the time you have been aware of what is a camera, you, I think you have seen just the digital cameras. But friends, at our times when we were students, we have seen cameras of traditional type. Those cameras were having films, correct, magnetic films and the image used to get captured in those films and the films were in the negative format then you had to you know send those films to the lab for getting converted into positive and you get a printout of the pictures clicked in your camera that old technology existed and the concept of digital camera started getting developed in this world somewhere in this beginning of year 2000 2001 that time this technology started getting popular i'm telling you the year 2000 2001 that is the time when the technology became popular and then you find lots of you know camera making companies they started producing digital cameras not just the camera for taking pictures even the video cameras now have become digital cameras earlier video cameras were videotape type of cameras now anyway let me tell you the interesting fact about kodak 
Kodak was one of the big market leaders when it comes to making cameras and camera films. In the year 1975, note it down, in the year 1975, Kodak was the company first to receive an offer of manufacturing digital camera. That means digital camera technology was first introduced to Kodak company because that was the market leader. Someone who has developed the technology brought that technology to Kodak. Now, Kodak analyzed that technology and they analyzed one important fact that their main product definitely was making camera but their more profitable product was selling camera rolls that is the films. Now what happens once you buy a camera and you need to use it you have to continuously buy those films. One film at that time used to contain around 30 photographs. So after clicking 30 photographs you have to now remove that film and insert a new film a blank film which will again capture images. Now this was an ongoing sale the sale of films. What was analysis made by Kodak? They believed that the moment they adopt the technology of digital camera, no one is going to buy camera films, those roles, correct? Nobody is going to buy. If nobody buys that product, the big profitable segment of Kodak will be just shut down and company will not be able to make advantage of that situation. So, just for one reason that their profitable segment could get shut down. Do you know what Kodak did? It simply discarded that technology, just kept aside the technology. They mentioned that we are not interested. They believe that whatever they are doing is going to, you know, run ahead. Whatever they are doing is the best. When you turn down a technological advancement when you don't accept technology means you are not moving with time and that happened with Kodak. Now what happened eventually see technological advancement a scientific technology coming up a new technology coming up if you don't adopt somebody else will adopt but it doesn't mean that if you don't adopt nobody will adopt. So many other companies which were into similar line of business making photographic equipments they adopted this technology much later Kodak had a good chance of you know developing the technology and adopting it you know making the whole business line change with time it did not do but others did and what is the scenario now if I talk about camera you don't even now think about Kodak in the first order. Canon cameras, Nikon cameras, Sony, these are more popular brands which have taken over the market lead today and they have become the leaders. Kodak is now a kind of laggard. Kodak is not able to even create a substantial market share which was one of the market leader at that time. Friends, not changing with time is going to put you into troubles. Now, we have another similar example known as Nokia example. Now friends, uh, again, during the year 2000, 2001 somewhere, I remember when I was a final CA student at that time, mobile phone technology itself was uh, newly introduced in our country, right? And that was the time when Nokia company started making you know very good quality mobile phones and they had made a big range of products different type of products from low cost to the expensive models and you know they had a wide range of products and they were practically the market leader then a change in the technology came touch screen phones when first this concept of touch screen phone was introduced the same thing happened this technology was first taken up to Nokia company this company did the same mistake what Kodak has done Nokia company did not adopt that technology 
Nokia company believed that whatever product we are making is the best. Nothing can replace it. They were overconfident about their own products. See where is Nokia today? Nokia is not able to create a pinch of market share today in the field of cellular phones. Correct? And now the other market leaders, Samsung, iPhone, you have lots of new coming entities which have started growing even though they have started the product launching much later. But what these companies are doing, they are running along with time. All the new technologies they are just picking up and they are using for their advantage. So friends, changing with time is so much essential. I would, uh, if you allow me, I would go little off track and talk about something for you as students. Friends, you are CA final students right now and you are sooner going to be chartered accountants. Once you become chartered accountant, it is not end of your task, right? It is actually beginning of your journey. Your career then starts. Now, once you become a qualified CA and if you stop learning, you are going to face the same problem as an individual. So your learning should never stop. Whatever changes are coming, what amendments are being introduced, whichever field you are into, you need to be aware about what is happening around you. Keep yourself updated, keep yourself, you know, upgraded with every piece of knowledge, with every new technology coming up. And as an individual, you will grow. If not, you will be turned down exactly like these examples. Please do not repeat history like these companies as an individual or as you know a part of an organization whatever role you are playing just keep up your changes with the time let us now talk about compliance risk now this is about exposure to legal penalties and loss an organization faces when it fails to act in accordance with industry laws and regulations internal policies or prescribed best practices the following are a few examples of compliance risks environmental risk workplace health and safety corrupt practices social responsibility risk quality risk and process risk let us do one thing friends let us first note down these points and then we will move ahead so quickly take note of whatever you find on screen then i'll explain each of these points in details
All right, let us discuss in detail about this compliance risk. To simply state this in one line, suppose there is any legal requirement which the business entity could not comply with and it is charged with some fine or penalty for such non-compliance. This is what we identify under the head compliance risk. So this kind of risk on the business entity is identified as compliance risk. Compliance risk may arise for lots of reasons as you can see listed over here. First of all, we talk about environmental safety. For example, uh, say for controlling pollution, industries which have complex production process which release lots of smokes through their production process the chimneys through which the smoke is being released requires fitting of smoke filters so that the air pollution can be minimized. Likewise, uh, industries which are making radio equipments, some kind of you know hazardous equipments are supposed to dispose of their wastages in a specified manner. Entities which are located near water supplies or fresh water resources like rivers etc. They are also required to comply with certain kind of regulations in terms of disposal of their wastages. Now non-compliance of this creates an environmental safety issue and that is where these entities might be charged with some fines or penalties and that is what we call as existence of compliance risk. Next could be, you know, safety measures, health related measures. For example, uh, say there is a shopping complex and it has lots of, you know, small, small units identified into some kind of shopping outlets. Now, the main building of this complex should have, you know, firefighting equipments. It should have proper exit routes in case of fire, in case of some problem, public in general should be able to exit the building with ease and they should have enough number of staircases and lifts. If these compliances are not carried out, the organization will be again charged with some kind of fine or penalty. Sometimes the degree of penalty could be so high that it may cause imprisonment to the people who were responsible to make sure that the compliance is done. There could be even situations relating to you know uh, say any entity which is into food supply, some kind of fresh food supply or packaged food. Now packaged food you know countries, the government of countries they are sincerely you know bothered with the compliance. The food license will be offered and only under the food license the entity is supposed to produce or manufacture those food articles. Now if you do not comply with the requirement of that food license obviously you will be charged penalty for that, you will be charged some fine for that. You would have heard sometimes these food supplying companies they write up something in the ingredients and the actual content when it is tested in the laboratory it is not matching with the ingredients mentioned and this would be a serious issue of compliance that means then these entities will be highly penalized for this type of problems friends there could be lots of matters but you can see one thing common in all these points that there is some legal requirement which you could not comply or there is something which you are not supposed to do as mentioned in the license or as mentioned by the authority by the regulation and you have done something which was prohibited either case if you are being penalized for that you are under a risk and this type of risk is identified as compliance risk. Let us now talk about operational risks. Now, it is the risk remaining after determining financing and systematic risk and includes risk resulting from breakdowns in internal procedures, people and systems. 
this type of risk relates to internal risk it also relates to failure on the part of the company to cope with day to day operational problems operational risk relates to people as well as processes operational risk can be summarized as human risk it is the risk of business operations failing due to human error so friends do one thing before i offer any kind of explanation over here quickly note down these important points all right so here we are talking about operational risks so friends operational level management because this is relating to the lower level of management which is into the action plan so now here we are not making strategic decisions here we are just implementing the process and action plan at this stage non fulfillment of the proper procedure in other words if there is a prescribed procedure and the operational efficiency being little lower the procedure has not been followed efficiently the type of manufacturing process the type of service process which is given as a benchmark rule to the operational level that this is what you have to do on a routine basis and because of inefficiency because of error if this is not being done nobody else is going to come and put fines and penalties on you but because of these inefficiencies because of these operational inefficiencies 
the entity may suffer losses wastages scraps these will arise more than the expected level and that is where the risk of losing your wealth because of these factors could be identified as operational risk so this is more of action related issue rather than strategic part let us now deal with the last part of the risk that is financial risk so financial risk is the possibility that shareholders or other financial stakeholders will lose money when they invest in a company that has debt if the company's cash flows prove inadequate to meet its financial obligations financial risk can be divided into following categories counterparty risk political risk interest rate risk currency risk actually the list can be so long but these are the main components of the risk that you find so please note it down before i offer any further explanation all right so now let us talk about the typical type of risk that we are mostly associated with right we chartered accountants are mainly concerned with this financial risk so what is this financial risk it is very simple thing you can easily understand it is basically risk that the stakeholders the real owners of the company the equity shareholders may not get their money back basically if the company is incurring losses if the company is not having enough assets or resources to even pay off its external liabilities obviously nothing will come in in the hands of equity now this typically 
is a problem faced by the stakeholders and you know as the term equity is defined the equity instrument in any company would be a financial instrument which offers the holder residuary interest in the company so basically the stakeholders the equity holders they just have residuary interest if the assets are falling short the ultimate sufferer will be the owner of the company or you can say the stakeholders or equity shareholders now what can cause this kind of financial risk we can have a very big list only four points have been mentioned over here and let me also talk about just these four points so first of all it is a counterparty risk so you have entered into a contract with someone that counterparty did not fulfill the terms of contract say you have sold goods on credit and the counterparty the debtor did not pay at all causing bad debts now this kind of loss is definitely a financial risk that means there may be chances of bad debts always right whenever you are selling goods on credit now what will happen this kind of risk is financial risk but within financial risk what factor causes that risk is the counterparty risk we then have political risk in a democratic environment that we have in india just imagine political parties change the government changes because every time the election would take place there is a change that a different government a different political party would now form the government now in such case the other political party the different political party will definitely come up with their own policies correct and this sometimes could be favorable to organizations or sometimes it could be unfavorable also maybe a new political party coming up with some different type of taxing system which is little you know expensive for the business entities too much of taxation could be imposed now this type of risk what a business entity is running is what we term as political risk which is eventually creating that financial risk so we have interest rate risk i would say why just interest rate risk we have even inflation risk right in again i would talk in indian context in a country like india if you can recall we have learned this in forex chapter under interest rate parity and purchasing power parity what happens you have high demand of capital in india and still little lesser supply of capital so demand of capital is high supply of capital is low what will happen the interest rates the cost of capital basically would rise up so in india interest rates are comparatively higher than the rates prevailing in other countries so it's not just about high interest rates even when interest rates are declining it could be a risk factor right so for a borrower rising interest rates could be a risk factor for an investor declining interest rate could be a risk factor the point is stability is what we are seeking right if there is stable interest rate if there is stability in inflation rate if there is stability in interest rate this kind of risk would not happen so this financial risk is arising because of interest rate and that is why termed as interest rate risk now at the last part we have even lot of you know other factors which may contribute to financial risk and one of those factors could be foreign exchange risk or simply exchange risk or currency risk now if we say that the value of indian rupee is constantly declining against us dollar we are talking about this risk as a currency risk which eventually causes financial risk so friends in lots of other topics like particularly like forex and derivatives we have learned a lot about financial risks in fact we have even learned techniques how to tackle how to manage these financial risks so friends uh, by far we have just understood different types of risks we have now to learn how to manage these risks and when it comes to risk management one calculative section which is included in your syllabus is what we identify as var value at risk so let us discuss something about value at risk pay attention on the screen 
some important notes to be written first and then I offer you the required explanation which will then be followed by solving some calculative questions. So as I just mentioned we are talking about a calculative content of this chapter titled as value at risk in short VAR. Now what is this? It is a measure of the risk of investments. It estimates how much a set of investments might lose given normal market conditions in a set time period such as a day. VAR that is value at risk is typically used by firms and regulators in financial industry to gauge the amount of assets needed to cover possible losses. So friends do one thing before I offer any further explanation on this please note down these important points.